Across the world, women are disproportionately affected in a number of different ways. One is women ha are usually responsible for getting water for the house. And as we have drought situations, women, and I visited women in Zimbabwe who went from walking five miles to get their, or five kilometers to get their water to walking 10 kilometers to get their water. Not only is that taking up a lot of their day just in, in that one task, but it also are areas of insecurity in doing that walking. So you find women who are experiencing sexual violence because of being in insecure situations. Unfortunately, I was in South Africa and um, found that we were, we were talking about access to reproductive health services. And women said there that they would like to have access to female condoms just so that they can wear them on a daily basis because of the extent of their, of their risk for sexual violence. So that was just staggeringly sober for me um, to hear that that's the level of risk that they feel like they're experiencing on a daily basis. And then here in the United States, also what we're seeing is a, a spike in violence against women that happens in post-disaster situations. And as we have this increase in extreme weather events and resulting from climate change, we're having women who are being um, impacted by violence. So after Hurricane Katrina, there was a spike in sexual violence as well as a spike in domestic violence. And you've seen that around the world as well, even with disasters not related to, to um, climate change, but still it just gives a sense of the pattern of uh, the effects of disaster on violence in general and the fact that women are disproportionately impacted.